Jack was in his fifth year in the ambulance service. His colleagues wondered why he hadn't burned out in all that time, still rushing to every call as bright-eyed as he had been on his first day, with the certainty that he was going to save a life. Every doctor's memory is imprinted with their first call, no matter how many years have passed, but that first person is remembered for life. Jack's memories were not pleasant. He had just started his shift when their team was sent out on a call to the other side of town. The rookie's hands were shaking, and his heart was pounding like crazy. His colleagues made fun of him the whole way, but when the ambulance stopped at the entrance, everyone remained serious. The door to the flat was ajar, and the bloodiest images from a horror movie flashed through Jack's mind, his palms cold and his fingers trembling. His colleague pushed the doors open confidently and called loudly for the owners. An unintelligible sound was heard from the far room. When the men entered the flat, they saw a weakened woman on the bed. She was moving with great difficulty. She was fading from kidney disease and could have been helped by the hospital treatment. But just as the doctors lifted the woman up to carry her to the ambulance, the patient's daughter burst into the flat. The girl launched herself at the men in a fury. Jack was closer to the door, so he was hit particularly hard. The daughter screamed, fought, scratched the man's face severely, and even bit his arm. The colleague didn't hesitate and gave the girl a sedative. It turned out that she and her mother were members of some kind of sect that doesn't allow its members to be treated in hospitals. Jack was then shocked to the core. Her own daughter wanted her mother to die so that she wouldn't have to go to the doctor's. The woman herself wanted to live, so she called an ambulance and was able to open the doors while the girl went about her business. The situation was resolved quickly. The colleagues signaled to Jack and they took the mother to the hospital. When the daughter came to her senses after the sedation, she brought her cult members, called the television, and the scandal was great. Especially when the patient, whose condition had been stabilized and improved, became involved. Jack decided to himself that he would never get involved in a family squabble again. Today's call reminded him in some ways of that first one. Jack couldn't understand why, but his heart was pounding just the same, and his hands were shaking a little. The same driver was sitting next to him, and on the other side was a new girl who had just finished her internship. A bad feeling had begun to creep in on Jack the morning he arrived for his shift. The head physician had notified him of an extension of authority, and now they would be going on calls to the surrounding villages as well. Jack had gone on such calls before, but today felt different. The car pulled up in front of a ramshackle old house. The doctors were met by neighbors who called for an ambulance. The elderly landlady had a severe heart ailment. Jack gave her an injection and carried her to the car to take her to town for a checkup. One of the neighbors volunteered to accompany the old lady as she had no relatives. His colleague was already in the ambulance and the driver started the engine when Jack was unkindly tugged on his sleeve. He turned around and saw a scruffy face with a hunted look. The boy, about seven years old, shrank his head into shoulders and was squinching his eyes as if expecting a blow. He said that his father had become ill. Jack said he would help and pulled his bag out of the car again. When the man turned around, the boy was gone, but something flashed across a few houses, and then a scruffy face peeked out from behind the fence. The doctor hurried over there. There was again no one near the fence. The front door creaked invitingly, and Jack looked up and shuddered. The house was plain. It looked good, solid, but there was a peculiar atmosphere about it that sent shivers down his spine. The paramedic called to the owners and pushed the wicket, but silence answered. The man went to the door and knocked. The door to the corridor opened, and the clatter of running feet could be heard. Jack thought of the worst-case scenario and headed resolutely into the depths of the house. The room, however, revealed a quite lively family. "'Who are you? Why have you come into my house?' the master asked angrily. He was lying on a bed in a well-furnished room, while the mistress was standing next to him, clutching her apron and in the corner of the room, there were three children who resembled one another. Among them, the boy who'd been calling for Jack's help was hushed up. I'm an ambulance doctor. I went to your neighbor's house and was told you were unwell, so I came to help. Where do you hurt, said Jack. Who told? The man furrowed his brow and turned his gaze to the children. They shrank back, 
averting their eyes. I don't remember, Jack answered. So can I help you? I have a patient waiting for me in the ambulance. The landlord glanced frowning from under his forehead at the doctor and nodded reluctantly. I can't get up. My back hurts, he admitted. Jack quickly examined the man. He was found to be suffering from an attack of sciatica. The doctor injected medication to relieve the spasm and swelling and advised him to seek expert help from a GP in town and dictated several medicines for recovery. At first, Jack wanted to write them down himself, but the patient's wife said the doctor's handwriting was incomprehensible and she would write them down for herself. Jack felt that she wrote much more than he dictated. Involuntarily, the man took a closer look at the strange family. The children hadn't moved at all during his visit, sitting quietly on a blanket on the floor in the corner. Jack had no offspring, but he was sure that small children must behave differently. The mistress looked very young, but somehow tired. She was riding carefully with her head bowed to the side. Jack took his eyes off the woman and immediately met the master's disgruntled gaze. He was jealously watching the doctor's every movement. Jack was uncomfortable with the look and breathed a sigh of relief when the hostess finished writing. Be sure to see a doctor, he reminded the landlord. These medicines will relieve the symptoms so you can move about in peace, but they won't take away the problem. Good, the man grimaced. Now get out of my house. Jack felt as if he'd been slapped in the face. He hadn't had such an unpleasant visit in a long time. The mistress picked up his bag, shoved it into the paramedic's hands, and led him insistently to the door by the elbow, said goodbye to him, and nimbly slipped something into his hand. The doctor wanted to ask what it was, but the woman quickly opened the front door in front of him and whispered desperately, Go away! Get out of here now! I beg you! The astonished man staggered across the courtyard. The door shut behind him with a clank, and a moment later there was a shout of anger from the man in the house. The words were inaudible, but rage oozed from every single sound. Jack only came to his senses at the gate of the strange house. He glanced at his hand and found a small piece of paper scribbled in a neat handwriting. The man was about to unwrap it when he heard a signal from the ambulance. Jack quickly slipped the note into his pocket and hurried to his colleagues. On the way, he unwrapped the message and read it. Please help us. My husband is constantly beating the children and not feeding me and locking me in the cellar. Right now, as you are standing by his bed, my eldest daughter is sitting under the floor. She has been without food for the third day now. The local sheriff is my husband's brother. We can't go to him. Help the children. I'm begging you. Jack reread the note several times. The text didn't fit into the head. He remembered the terrified children, the tormented mistress, and the furious shouts of the landlord. Behind the man, the old woman and her neighbor were talking quietly. The doctor decided to cautiously question them about the strange family. They looked around fearfully and assured him that they knew nothing. At the hospital, when the neighbor stepped away with the nurse to register the patient, the old lady suddenly grabbed Jack's arm with a strong hand and pulled him towards her. Help them, she whispered. The children won't survive in there. The doctor finished his shift as if in a fog. He shared the story with the driver, but found no response. The head physician also brushed it off, saying it was none of their business and let the police deal with it. But Jack couldn't let it go. He realized that the woman might no longer have a chance of passing on such a note. It was all up to him. He logically assumed that the law would have to sort it out, but when he arrived at the police station, he was met with complete indifference. They promised to pass his statement to the local sheriff. Jack immediately tore up the paper and said that he had changed his mind to file a complaint. What to do next, the paramedic didn't understand. Suddenly, his colleague came to the rescue. The recent student turned out to have a lot of friends in different spheres. She found a lawyer, a journalist, and volunteers from a child protection organization. Together, they went to law enforcement agencies and explained the difficult situation. And this time, they were heard. They didn't turn the case over to the local perpetrators, but went to the village on their own. Jack went with them in case of first aid for the victims, so he was in the thick of things. The owner refused to let people into his house and immediately got into a heated brawl. His brother came to his rescue with a service weapon, which he wasn't afraid to use. The gun was quickly taken away and the two brawlers were twisted hand and foot. 
But Jack still had to bandage a tangential wound on the arm of one of the cops. Only two children were found in the house. No one else was there. Although the neighbors hadn't seen the family leave the yard, Jack remembered about the cellar from the note. The children were shaking with fear and didn't show where the others had disappeared to. After searching the premises, the police found the cellar entrance covered by a carpet. Down in the pitch darkness, they found his wife and two other children. They were sitting on the earth floor near the wall, shivering with cold. When all the occupants of the house were led outside, Jack was horrified. On his first visit, he hadn't noticed the thinness of the children. They were dressed in large clothes covering their skinny bodies. Numerous bruises on their arms and legs were visible in the sun, and the woman's eye was swollen with a huge purple bruise. She told him tearfully that she had been sitting in the cellar since the day that Jack had first come to them. Her husband didn't like the way she interacted with the paramedic, so he decided to punish her. The children tried to stand up for their mother and found themselves standing next to her. Jack shuddered. What would have happened if he had stayed out of someone else's family on the advice of his colleagues? As soon as the neighbors realized that the brothers might go to jail for a long time, they began to testify. The court sentenced the perpetrators to jail time. The woman and her children stayed in the hospital for a long time. These people seemed to have no healthy organs, and their psyche was so shattered that the psychotherapist shrugged their shoulders. There was a lot of work ahead, but the main step had been taken. The family had been taken away from the tyrant thanks to the courage of the mother and Jack. Now Jack continued his work. He now carefully examined not only the sick, but also their family. After all, who knows what horrors lurk behind the next door. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. If you enjoyed this story, please hit that like button. And also consider subscribing to the Viral Tales channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of when I have another story to share with you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.